Many modern radio applications require very fast channel switching as part of their normal operation. This can incorporate switching from using channel 1 on a transceiver to using channel 2, or switching from transmitting to receiving in as small a time as possible. Further still, some applications require switching operating frequencies on a regular basis without fully resetting the transceiver device. As part of the transceiver evaluation software provided by analog devices for the ADR-V9001 software-defined radio products, we include tools to help customers design, evaluate and implement timing signals to control this automated time division duplexing behaviour, as well as provide the means to export this signal control scheme to any master IC a customer wishes to use. In this video tutorial, we'll explore the basics of this automated time division duplexing control, list some of the basic considerations needed when designing an auto TDD timing scheme, and provide a quick demonstration on exporting the resulting auto TDD scheme for use in custom platforms. I'm Oshin Watkins, and you're very welcome to this video guide from Analog Devices. We'll begin by reviewing the use case of interest. A very common application for time division duplexing is the long-term evolution setups, or LTE setups, used in mobile communications. If we examine this list of use cases here, we'll see there are a wide variety of setups to choose from. For the sake of simplicity, we'll implement config0 from this list. Normally these setups are implemented from the mobile device's point of view, However, to keep more in line with this diagram, we'll instead implement it from the base station point of view, meaning we'll implement this timing diagram literally in our system. Now let's begin the setup of our device. Begin by opening TES and connecting to the platform. Under the device configuration tab, we'll set the setup to LTE, duplexing to TDD, and channels to channel 1. Most other options can be left at their defaults. However, I am also going to suggest setting the data port sample rate to 15.36 megasamples per second. This will narrow the operating ranges of both the TX and the RX, making visualizations easier. Now let's inspect the carriers tab. By default, the carrier frequencies are set to 900 megahertz, which in my setup will work fine. If needed, you can change these frequencies to suit your own setup, for example if you're using the higher frequency variant of the eval board. Before delving into the complexity of the TDD setup, let's confirm that the basic setup works as we expect. To do this, we'll transmit a basic TX tone and receive a simple RX tone. Program a simple 903 MHz tone into the Transmit tab of TES and view it using a Spectrum Analyzer. Once satisfied, disable TX and switch focus to the Receive tab. Press Play, observe the empty spectrum then enable a signal generator at 897 MHz. Observe the tone at a minus 3 MHz offset. Once satisfied, disable the signal generator, then disable RX. Satisfied with the basic operation of the setup, let's now begin exploring the design and development of the automated TDD setup. The best place to begin is by reading through the associated chapters of the user guide namely microprocessor and system control, timing parameters control, and by reading the automated TDD user tutorial available on EngineerZone. Close inspection of the configuration reveals that only half of the setup needs to be implemented, as the second half is simply a repeat of the first. Let's now put this diagram aside for a moment and consider the implementation of these timings on the platform. We know the platform clock operates at 200 MHz, meaning that a 5 millisecond frame needs 1 million clock cycles. Each of the 5 subframes takes 1 millisecond, which translates to 200,000 clock cycles. Using this simple division of the frame, let's now attempt to build a very basic implementation, allowing for a 2000 clock cycle overlap in the special switching subframe. This timing diagram provides a clear visualization of the intended TDD timing with all signal names and switching times listed. Implementing this timing setup in TES is very straightforward. With the device still connected but unprogrammed, switch over to the automated TDD tab. 
First enable the automated TDD state machine. You may get a message or a new plot window opening. Ignore these for now. Input your frame length, 1 million clock cycles. Select repeat one frame forever. Then provide your desired signals and timings in the table provided. The plot window displays a diagram detailing your programmed TDD timings. Be sure these match your expectations before proceeding. If all appears well, program the part and again test your TX and RX operation. Monitoring the TX spectrum, we see the frame outlined in the zero span plot. One millisecond regions of high TX power followed by four milliseconds of quiet. Given that we're only transmitting a single tone with no data encoded into the transmission, we're not going to see any lost data or distorted transmission, so luckily we'll not have to modify the TX TDD timings. However, when a tone is injected into the RX port, we note a region of zeros, as well as a raised noise floor and some extra spurious content. In this example, we are only receiving a simple tone. However, if we had modulated data in this signal, this distortion at the end of the flat region would lead to difficulties in accurately demodulating and understanding the data just received. For the sake of this example, we'll attempt to account for this region of distortion by returning to basics and examining the device timings. The signals listed in the auto TDD table can be confusing upon first reading. Note how in the original table we had both a pin and a DMA signal for each RF signal chain we used. Why is this and why the distinction between pin and enable pin? The most important thing to remember in all of this is that these signals are coming from the platform, not the device. The enable pin is a physical connection on the ADR-V9001 device, whereas the pin signal is a signal generated by the FPGA to perform whatever task we assign to it. In automated TDD setups such as this one, the pin signal is directed to the enable pin on the device. However, in fast frequency hopping setups, which will not be detailed in this video, the pin signal is instead directed elsewhere to control which signal chain is employed for each hop. In our setup then, on every edge of a pin signal, the RF signal chain associated with it is either powered up, calibrated and enabled, or powered down and disabled. These processes take time to accomplish, time that our setup must account for. Similarly, the DMA signals are platform signals used to allow the transfer of data from the platform's memory banks to the device's SSI ports, and vice versa. The DMA signals represent the time at which data is made available either to the device, for TX, or to the platform, for RX, not the time at which data is present on the RF ports of the device. Separating the data on the RF port and the data at the SSI port is the propagation delay, which again was not accounted for in our naive setup. Correcting for these discrepancies involves understanding the delays of data through the device. The TDD Enablement Delays tab is where we go to set and inspect the delay values for each individual RF signal chain. In this video we will only explore the minimum amount that we need to get our system working. All RF channels must consider the propagation delay, the rise to analog on delay, the rise to on delay, and the hold delay. TX signal chains may also need to consider the fall to off delay, however our setup does not need to consider this time. Full details on each of the delays in the system can be found in the microprocessor and system control, timing parameters control chapter of the user guide. Other delays can be introduced to your system based on your setup, for example when monitor mode is enabled. These additional delays will not be discussed here. Focusing only on the delays we must account for in the evaluation system, the primary delays of interest are the propagation delay, the rise to on delay, and the hold delay. All others are either unimportant or will be assigned by TES for us. Default values will be populated into the TDD Enablement Delays tab when you configure your desired setup, aside from in custom setups, where these values are populated with the defaults from the previously configured setup. These defaults are derived from tests we have performed in our own labs, however the true value for each delay will either be determined by you, or unique to your own platform. Proper measurement of any uncontrolled delay is essential to the operation of any auto-TDD setup. 
Looking at the default values for our setup, we notice immediately that the propagation delay is shorter than the internal path delay. As the internal path delay is part of the prop delay, this can never happen, meaning we must change this default value. Given the limited capabilities of the setup that I'm using, I am unable to measure the prop delay accurately. A conservative way to handle the prop delay is to set this value to 0 nanoseconds, meaning the TDD state machine will simply ignore it. Tez will automatically change some of the other delays to suit this new prop delay. That's fine. Looking back at the RX spectrum from our initial tests, we see that the distorted region lasts for roughly 15 microseconds, which we can account for by delaying the rising edge of the RX1 DMA signal. A quick and simple test of this new timing scheme is to inject a tone into the RX port and monitor the received spectrum in TES with all TX signal chains disabled. Any unidentified spurs or region of zeros in the time domain plot are causes of concern. With those tests concluded, we've covered the very most basic operations of our automated TDD state machine. Exporting this setup is as simple as producing sample code in whichever language you are building your application. We have a dedicated tutorial on this topic available on EngineerZone. Simply follow along with that after developing your auto TDD setup and your TDD state machine will be produced as part of that code base. There are more elements of functionality that have not been touched on here. However, these will be covered in future written guides on the EngineerZone forums. If you need more help in the meantime, you can always navigate to these forums via our product page and ask your own question, read through older questions, or even read through other user tutorials on the forum. Do also be certain to maintain the newest revision of user guide for your own use. This can also be downloaded from the product page. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.